Hey gang, good morning, wherever you're tuning in from. Welcome to this latest installment. What's new in Civil 3D 2023.2? So that usually, generally speaking, Autodesk has their you know, products come out in April and then they have a big release in October, November, and there's some new features brought into that. And that's what we're seeing with this dot two update. And we're gonna do a quick flyby of everything that's included with this update and how you can apply it with your designs. All right, today's agenda, dot two update. So five big things we're seeing in this update. So corridor transitions, so you can, this new button called edit corridor transitions, and it uh, streamlines some, some workflows with corridors. Label control, manipulating them, mainly focused on performance. Catchments and property sets, this is all within Project Explorer, so we're seeing some features added into Project Explorer window. Subassembly composer, some new tips or new ways to work faster in Subassembly composer. And last thing, performance. So mainly opening files and updating whatever data you're changing in your files. And you know, mainly the, the big one that bogs it down is corridors and updating those corridors. And one last thing before we jump into it, creating optimization project explorers now included with Civil 3D. You do not need the AEC collection. So very, very nice for adopting those, those new tools. All right, let's jump into Civil. Let's take a look at things. And we're just gonna do a quick flyby of everything in, in here. So. Keep in mind, we're not gonna we're not going too far in the nuts and bolts. All right, left side here, I got a intersection corridor within it. Notice uh, just a couple different views here. Is one we're just gonna watch them update as we as we edit our transitions. So working on the left side here, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my corridor and edit corridor transitions right here. And we're gonna go ahead and grab that. And now it says, you know, what what baseline do you wanna do you want do you wanna edit? So we're just gonna grab this side road right here. Notice it highlights red. You know, if I kind of come up here, we go up here, we grab this one as well. But we're just gonna grab this one right here. Okay. Now it says select the subassembly. So this is pretty cool because it's dynamic. You can see what you're selecting. You know, how you have things displayed. So if I go just from left to right, we're just gonna watch things highlight down here in the bottom right of the assembly. So here's our daylighting, you know, so highlights blue, here's my curb, here's my lane, lane, curb, daylight on the other side. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add transition in for our lane. Let's go ahead and just grab the lane, boom. And now it's gonna select the parameter tra to transition. We're gonna transition the width right here. And now it says, where do you wanna do it? So we're, we're just gonna go just for kind of right now in the middle area, so 300, 400 station range. So Select start, sheet, start station of the transition for the width. So it was 300. And enter the parameter value at station 300. So we're just gonna leave this as default, so 12 feet. And then select the end station of the transition for the width. So now it says, what station do you wanna end this transition with? So 320. And now the parameter, so where are we going to? So we were at 12 feet, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a six foot lane width uh, transition, so we're at 18 feet. Okay, now it says and transition types. You can see we have a bunch of different options. We're just gonna leave it as linear. So linear line between these two points, 12 and 18 feet. Okay, now it says select the end station for the next transition or press enter to end the command. So we need to extend our, you know, that 18 foot, and then we need to close it back off to come back down to 12 feet. So we're gonna go from 320 to 400. So 400 is our end station. And enter the parameter value at, or at station 400. So you notice it says 12 feet. We're gonna make that 18. And transition type, so this is gonna be linear. There is no transition. We're just, you know, it's a placeholder going from you know, beginning to end, so linear. And then select the end station of the next transition. So we're at 320, 400. We're going to go to 420. Now we're going to come back down to 12 feet. So 420. And now it says enter the parameter value for at station 420. We're just going to enter 12. Notice the end value defaults to 12 there. It recognized it. We're just going to transition it. There we go. And linear. All right. Now we're going to press enter to end the command. And we have to hit apply up here on the top right. So we hit apply. And now we have our corridor transition. So pretty simple ways just to add in a transition. You could also do this in a variety of different ways to tweak your corridor. So there's one way to take a look at things. All right, so corridor uh, transitions. 
Now let's get into label control. So I'm gonna bounce into this file here. And you know, you look at this file and you say like, wow, that's a crazy, crazy alignment. The method to my madness for the performance end, which we're gonna see towards the end here. All right, so first thing, I'm gonna move my mug over here. All right, first thing right here. So we have these two new buttons here, show labels, and then we have do then we have these uh the label optimize. So first thing right here, I'm just gonna do an REA. You want to do an REA? All right, labels, everything's displayed. If I hit this button right here, the bottom right, show labels, turn them off, turn them on. I zoom out, let's see, turn them off, turn them on. So we're gonna leave them on now. Those are all my labels are on. Now I'm just gonna zoom in, just you know, we're at the start of the alignment. So we have these two new options here. Redraw when zooming, panning, label group, level of de detail. So watch this, redraw when zooming, panning, if I enable this, as I pan, every time I pan over, notice there's no labels, I finish the pan, it redraws them. It redraws them. And if I unselect this, it won't redraw them. So if you don't want to have your labels constantly re-updating every time you pan, you can disable this now. So nice performance improvements with labels. And we can do an REA right here to bring them back. So just to redraw them, manually redraw things, just to focus on performance versus the updating of data that might not necessarily be relevant to me in this certain, certain moment. All right, moving along here, catchments and property sets. All right, so file here, just surface, and I have a, I have a catchment I created right here. You can see it highlighting. Then I have a few, I have a few Kogo points and Kogo points to find in the surface. You can see a couple more here that are within the description key. All right, so let's just crack open Project Explorer and see how that all looks and feels. So Home tab, Project Explorer, and we got Project Explorer open here. Okay, and just going over from left to right. Notice it's all those mainly AEC objects, but things have been getting added in. So notice that parentheses one indicates you have an object in that that's uh, in your file. So let's go ahead and let's go to our catchments here. This is what's new. We got this new little logo here. We have a catchment. And we can just select, select it and you can see the flow type, just more basically an extended properties of that catchment. And notice the third tab here, catchment property sets. So we can see our catchment, it has a property set defined to it. So if you're a property set user, now you can see this in Project Explorer. These should show zero and one. And zero would mean like no, Property sets attached to it. One would say like, hey, there's a property set attached to it. But that's really all it did. Now it's more dynamic. Same thing. So it's not just with catchments with property sets. It's all the civil objects. So we're all the objects within Project Explorer. So if I just go into my point groups here, you can see here's our, you know, we have our all points and no display. But if I go ahead and grab my all points, you can see I have a Kogo point property set attached to it. Same thing with no display. Kogo point property set attached to it. So you can see it with all civil objects. So very exciting to see the property sets, be able to A, see what's attached. And uh, it's a little bit more dynamic than you know, the zero and ones it was before. All right, moving along, moving along. Okay, pipe and pressure networks. This one's been asked for for a long time and it's cool they got the, uh, you can see this happen. So attaching a pressure network to a gravity structure is now possible in Civil 3D 2023.2. What does this mean? It means that I can attach the uh, that pressure pipe to this gravity structure. So this file right here, just notice, just a, this is my gravity network, this is my pressure network, and I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this pipe right here, and notice it's a little bit odd how it happens. But if you go ahead and grab this right here, notice it doesn't attach right away. So and so it's not like it um, how it works with gravity when you hover over it and you see the glyphs. You don't see the glyphs here, but Super easy to do it. We just select the structure and we say connect to part right here. And we go ahead and grab our pressure network and now we are attached to our gravity structure. If I go ahead and grab my structure, go to my structure properties, go to my connections. We can see my connected pipes right here. So this would be you know, your gravity network. And then we have connected pressure pipes. So this new window here. So what are the components of that pressure network and how's it being attached there? So pretty cool, we can see uh, pressure attached to gravity. Uh, only thing next is uh, different gravity networks attached to each other. So it's in the pipeline from what I see on the roadmap. 
All right. Now, let's see. Anything else here? Um, intersections, label control, property sets. No. What we're going to do now is I'm going to minimize this now. And we are going to compare. I have 22 on the left and 23 on the right. And we're going to open files up and we're going to force the corridor to update. So remember that crazy alignment I had? I created a corridor from that. I wanted to, we're going to try and break it. So, or, or bog it down a lot. So just keep in mind with these tests, this is a very biased test. I have multiple sessions open. I have screen shares going. I have a lot of stuff going on in the background in terms of you know things I can't really control in terms of an isolated test of 23 and 22 on different machines. Um, these files are also made in 23 too, so you know, we're going back. So just keep in mind there are variables, but this is going to be an unbiased test in front of us of two files, the same exact file, and um, opening and updating those corridors. All right, let's just, I'm just going to crack this open and I'm just going to, I'm going to start my stopwatch here. All right, let's go ahead and I'm just going to stop. Reset. All right, let's go ahead. Performance 2022. We're going to start this, open this. Stopwatch has started. Let's wait till we have functionality. Oh, and we do. So eight seconds, eight seconds. Functionality. Let's do the same thing. 2023. Dot two performance on the right side. So we had 8.1 seconds. You know, let's see what we have on the right side here. So performance, reset, and click. And timer started. We are chugging along here. All right. Functional. Seven and a half. All right, so half a second quicker. So very close though. Um, but half a second quicker on just opening these files. Let's reset this here. We're going to go over to this. Um, I'm going to go over to 2022 and we're going to force update our corridor. Force update all corridors and start. We are updating. We are updating in 22. Waiting. Are we functional? Are we functional? We're functional. 10 seconds. Same thing on the right side. Here we go. All right, let me reset my timer and enter okay we're going we're going and okay and um, we are functional 9.94 so fat, a little faster about a second three quarters of a second so seeing a little bit a little bit faster performance all right now we're going to go to a little bit down the wormhole a bigger corridor and so this one takes a little bit longer so let's do the same thing again so I'm just, we're going to leave everything open here. We're just going to put a little bit of a burden on civil. All right. So we'll just keep our, just for testing sake. So 2022 first, reset, start, open. And we are opening up our little bit more complicated corridor file. So let this cook, let me cook. All right, here we go. This one does take a little bit longer. I did try and really, I tried to make it, try to make it do it. All right. So when are we functional? All right. Functional. 26 seconds. It'd be a little slow, but the screen should be slowing that down. All right. So we're functional on the left side. So 26. Let's remember that number. All right. Same thing. 23, same file. Okay. And we're timing. And we're opening, and we're opening. Okay, and we're opening. All right, let's see. Are we functional? We're functional. Okay, 22 seconds. Four seconds quicker. So a bit faster in 23 and 22. All right, let's do the same thing. Fourth quarter update from both sides. I think this one takes about a minute, so if you get sick of, sick of me talking, feel free to drop off. All right, force update all corridors. Start. Looking along here. Oh, some events. That's all right. We're just trying to see how long it's going to take it to take you to update. I think this takes about a minute. About a minute. All right.
Okay, are we functional yet? Oh, not quite yet. 45 seconds here. Oh, one quarter updated, not quite yet. Okay, we're waiting. Oh, there we go. Now we are. 57 and a half seconds. All right, let's do the same thing on the right side. So 57 and a half. So, civil, you better be a little faster. All right, force, reset. Force update, all corridors. Start. Here we go. We're cooking along. 123.2. How are you going to do? All right. 10 seconds in. Cruising along here. All right, all right, all right. And this is the last thing we're getting into here, so just as I'm talking along. Quarter transitions. Redrawing labels with a focus on performance. And I'd try to explore property sets, attachments, and connecting pressure network to gravity. The other, the four before this. All right, we're at 40 seconds here. I think we we're at 56, 57 previously. Okay, we're waiting, we're waiting. We'll be a little quicker here. Maybe we won't. All right, let's see. How are we doing? All right. Yep. Oh, one minute here. So we were a little slower on the last one at 23. So, but three, what, three, three, three out of the four tests, 23 was faster. So just keep in mind there are some variables involved here that are a little bit uncontrollable in terms of all, all the all the stuff going on in the background. But we are seeing it faster. So pretty cool stuff with 2023.2. So hey, I hope you found this helpful and in terms of you know where the product's going. And I uh, definitely encourage you to stay involved with the product because Autodesk is really focusing on what the consumer is it's doing and what direction the consumer where they want to go. So appreciate the time and have a nice rest of your week.